Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on cover letter writing. My name is Michelle Furlong and I am an Nova Scotia Works school liaison who currently works with high school youth grades 9 to 12. I am a certified career development practitioner and am pleased to be here to share some really important information with you today. So what is a cover letter? It is a letter of introduction. It is a formal single page letter written to the person or organization you are applying to. It goes along with your resume and is a chance to introduce yourself to a potential employer and explain your suitability for the role to try and convince them you are the right person for the job. It is specific to the job position you are applying to. It must include the job title of the position, the job or competition number, and where you found it. Use keywords from the job ad in your cover letter, specifying the skills and abilities you have that the employer is looking for. And it should be attached to every resume you submit to an employer. A cover letter should be a part of every single job you apply for unless you are specifically asked not to include one. For entry level positions, you may not need to provide a cover letter. However, if you have one, it will not hurt to attach it when applying. It may set you apart from the other applicants. What is the purpose of a cover letter? Well, a cover letter is sent with a resume to highlight those elements of your education, experience, and skills that most closely align with the specific needs of the employer. It introduces yourself and prompts the employer to read your resume. An effective cover letter is a sales pitch and should be clear, concise, positive, and relevant. Cover letters are not meant to repeat what is on your resume, but rather an enhancement. That means perhaps wording things a little differently or going into more detail. You want to express your interest in the field and demonstrate through your personality and skills why you are right for the job. This is your opportunity to express how you will become an asset to the organization or business. Cover letters are also required when applying for certain scholarships and bursaries. These would also need to be tailored to the specific award you are applying for. Why is a cover letter important? It provides a potential employer with a personal sense of who you are. A well-written cover letter increases your chances of landing a job interview. Your cover letter sets the stage for your resume. It clearly defines why you want the position and why you are the best person for the job. It shows time, dedication, and interest in the job or scholarship you are applying to. You will want to speak their language. Use terminology that was in the job posting will show you have done your research and that you understand or are making an effort to understand their industry. Before you start writing. So there are a few things you should do before you start writing your cover letter. You want to gather all of the information you need to write the cover letter, including the job description and job advertisement. This holds the key information, including skills, requirements and qualifications about what the employer is looking for. Information about the company. So this would be their mission statement, their vision statement, their values. You want to know these to ensure they align with what you're looking for. It can also be beneficial to pick out keywords or phrases that are important to the company, such as teamwork, positive attitude, diversity, and inclusion. You'll want to gather your resume. Make sure your resume is up to date. You can use information from your resume to help assist you in writing your cover letter, 
by highlighting skills you have that the employer is seeking and using previous work, volunteer, or extracurricular activities to help demonstrate your ability to perform certain tasks. For example, if the company values leadership and you are captain of a sports team or leader of a club or committee, this would demonstrate your capability in showing leadership. And lastly, you want to gather letters of reference. So you want to make sure that you can get positive reference letters to help show a potential employer what previous employers or teachers or mentors think about you, your work ethic, and your attitude. Cover letter tips. So now we're going to review some important tips to help make your cover letter stand out. If possible, you want to address the cover letter to the hiring manager using their first and last name. This can help you stand out against other applicants as it shows you took the time to research and inquire about the name of the person in charge of hiring. You want to be specific, confident, and positive. Employers look for candidates who have a positive attitude and are confident in their abilities. Being specific about tasks or duties you perform helps a potential employer to get a sense of your work ethic and fit for the company. Utilize the job posting for keywords. You are encouraged to print off any job ads you apply to and highlight the keywords or phrases of what they are looking for. If you possess any of the skills or requirements listed, add a few that you think are important or that you are best at, giving examples of how you've applied them. Don't overuse the word I. Using the word I too much can be perceived as self-centered. Focus more on how you meet the employer's needs. Proofread to ensure spelling and grammar are correct. Proofread your cover letter yourself, then get someone else to review it for you. Sometimes a fresh set of eyes can pick up on something that we may have overlooked. Having spelling or grammatical errors in your cover letter could cost you the job as it shows a lack of attention to detail and will likely be discarded. It should be no longer than one page. A cover letter should be relatively brief, not exceeding one page in length. And you want to save a copy on the cloud, the flash drive, or your email. You should save a copy of each cover letter you make and title it according to the position you applied for. If the employer is asking you to submit both in one document, you can copy and paste your resume to the cover letter. If sending the document electronically, be sure to send it as a PDF attachment unless otherwise stated so the format remains the same. What happens if you don't have any work experience? Well, if you do not have work experience, you can still write an effective cover letter using some examples below. General skills that help you work in a team. You want to demonstrate to the employer that you have the ability to work well with others. So include examples such as excellent communication skills, decision-making skills, responsibility, organizational and planning skills, reliability, and respectfulness. Personal attributes that will help you learn to work in a professional work environment. This could include attributes such as being highly motivated, an eagerness and willingness to learn, and a positive, friendly demeanor. Key strengths and contributions that show you are a standout applicant. For key strengths, you want to choose qualities you have that you feel an employer would benefit from and that would help you stand out from others applying to the job. 
Maybe you are a captain of a sports team, a member of student council, or involved in extracurricular activities at school. School work experience or volunteer experience. Experiences both at school or in a volunteer capacity will demonstrate to a potential employer that you enjoy being active in your school and or community and are willing to lend a hand and gain skills without any monetary compensation. This shows employers you believe that what you do matters and are eager to learn new skills and get involved, being a well-rounded individual. Any sporting or community club participation. Being on a sports team, club, or committee demonstrates your ability to work in a team effectively and are able to get along with others to get a job done. It may also show leadership skills and time management skills, all of which employers are looking for when hiring a candidate. Hobbies or interests that are relevant to the job. If you have any hobbies or interests that are relevant to the job, it would be a good idea to highlight them. For example, if you enjoy swimming and have taken lessons, you would want to highlight this in your cover letter if you were applying to a lifeguard position at the local pool or beach. Or if you are an avid gamer and were applying to a video game store, you would want to express your interest in that hobby as this would be an asset to the employer. Cover letter format. We now know the information necessary that goes into a cover letter, but how do we format it? Let's take a look. So you want to start with a heading. The heading should match the heading on your resume. You then want to put the employer's name employer's title and the address of the organization. So this is where you put the name of the company or organization you are applying to. To find their address, you can Google, search, or phone them to confirm. You want to include the job reference, the title of the position, and the job or competition number. You would find this information on the job ad or posting. It is usually located at the top or right side of the page. You want to address it to the employer. Try to find out the first and last name of the hiring manager so you can personalize the cover letter to them specifically. If you cannot find this out, then simply put, Dear Hiring Manager. And then you start with the introductory paragraph, followed by the second paragraph, the closing paragraph, and then your signature. We will take a closer look at the content that goes into each paragraph over the next few slides. So there are four main parts to a cover letter. One, about the job. Two, about the company three, about you, and four, the conclusion. And we will now take a closer look at these in the next slide. So as you can see here, the heading on this cover letter would match the heading that she has on her resume. It then is followed by the date, the company address, and the name. So this person did take the time to figure out that the hiring manager was Miss Smith. So she addressed it to the person in charge of hiring. Part one is about the job. So in this paragraph, you want to identify the position you are applying for and how you found out about it. Also include a brief statement of fit. So in this example, she says, it is with great interest and enthusiasm that I submit my resume for the position of administrative assistant with ABC Company as advertised on Career Beacon, competition number 2017AA. 
With over 10 years of proven experience providing administrative duties for several different companies, I am confident I will make an immediate contribution to your team. Part two is the focus on the company. So you want to show you have researched the company and demonstrate why you want to work for them. So in this example, she says, after reviewing your company's website, I see that there is a strong emphasis on procedure. In past positions, I have demonstrated the ability to effectively handle situations or inquiries while working within policy, procedures, and standard processes. You will find I am detail-oriented and able to analyze, prioritize, and resolve client requests or issues quickly and effectively. I possess excellent communication skills, both oral and written. Part three is about you. So this is where you want to review the job advertisement and underline every, every required skill and job duty. Match these required skills with the skills that you possess. Be able to demonstrate how you possess those skills. You want to provide two to three of your most relevant skills, qualifications, or accomplishments. So in this example, she says, I have remarkable interpersonal, organizational, and time management skills. I am well versed in all the Microsoft Office suite applications. Furthermore, I learn new applications quickly and efficiently. I am able to support team goals along with finishing my assigned tasks, which makes me a perfect fit for a multitasking environment such as yours. And part four is the conclusion. You want to finish your cover letter with a call to action. For example, asking for an interview or a meeting and provide a way for them to contact you. So you want to provide your phone number and or email address. So in this example, uh, she says this, this summary, as well as my resume, cannot adequately communicate my qualifications in depth. I look forward to meeting with you to discuss how I would be an asset to ABC Company. You can reach me by phone at 902-445-3600. And lastly, the signature. If you are applying in person or sending it by mail, be sure to sign your name at the bottom of the letter. If you are sending it electronically, then a signature is not required, but you must remember to type your name out at the bottom. Some people will also choose to print off a copy of their cover letter, sign it, so put their signature on it, then scan it and send it that way so that it does have their signature on it when they are sending it electronically, but this is not required. So now we will watch a short video on how to write a cover letter if you are a high school student. Hello everybody, welcome to this tutorial on how to write a cover letter for a high school student. The cover letter example that I'm about to write applies to students that don't have any formal paid work experience. I will show you how to formulate your personal qualities and characteristics and relate these to the job requirements. But before we start, let me first emphasize on five important keynotes for writing your own version. First off, use a business letter format, so align left or justify text. Make the text single spaced, except for the double spaces between paragraphs. Furthermore, use the appropriate font and font size. Pick Times New Roman, Arial or Calibri with a 10 to 12 point size for easy reading. Second, find out to whom you are writing to and address your letter directly to the reader, like Dear Mr. Taylor or Greetings Mr. Taylor and try to avoid generic salutations like Dear Sir or Madam, Dear Hiring Manager and especially not to whom it may concern. Thirdly, the main body text should highlight your qualities, characteristics and enthusiasm for this specific position. If you have any major attributes, try to relate these to the job requirements and provide context. So what examples do you have that demonstrate your capabilities? Fourthly, avoid too many I statements. Remember, 
it's not about you, but what you can offer to the employer. You need to show that you know how to make a positive contribution to their organization. For example, tell the reader about your ambitions to develop your professional skills or contribute to their campaigns. Lastly, proofread your cover letter and check your spelling and grammar with the word spelling check. Also, double check the sender and receiver information before submission. All right, follow up on these five keynotes and if you have any questions thus far, leave a comment down below. Now let's start writing the cover letter example, shall we? Start off by listing your personal information on either the left or right side. Then include the date between double spaces, followed by the employer's name, job title and contact information. RE followed by application and the job position. Keep it short and concise. As for the salutation, know to whom you are writing to. In this case, we write down greetings Mr. Taylor or dear Mr. Taylor. In the first paragraph, you start off by expressing your interest for the job opportunity and or company you would like to work at. If you want to express your excitement, which is definitely a good thing, you can also say, I am keenly interested or I am thrilled. Furthermore, one of the best ways to get your food in the door is by mentioning a professional connection to one of their current personnel. Other ways to grab the reader's attention is by showing that you did your research. In the second paragraph, you shortly introduce yourself, followed by your motivation for the position. Let the reader know why the company appeals to you and show that you care. Your cover letter should be personal and not something that can be copied and pasted to other employers. In order to personalize your cover letter, you need to do proper research on the background of the company and the interest of this person. In the third paragraph, you can emphasize on your personal attributes and work experience. Key here is to not simply list them like in your resume, but to provide context. For example, if you claim to obtain communication skills, you need to back it up with some real life experiences. Some students refer to a professional reference that they tap from professors, coaches, or college personnel. Either way, you can highlight personal attributes with bullet points. In the last paragraph, you can express your motivation to discuss your potential contribution to, for example, their upcoming marketing campaigns. At the same time, you subtly initiate an interview. Also, inform the reader about the attachments and availability to ask any questions. At last, thank the reader for their time and consideration and close your cover letter with yours sincerely or best regards in between white lines, followed by your name. A cover letter should be no longer than five paragraphs, 400 words and fit on one page. Also, try to maintain an overall tone of voice that is confident, polite and sincere. All right, within just several minutes, I wrote an example that students without any experience can use as an inspiration for writing their own version. Furthermore, I want to emphasize on the importance of matching your cover letter and resume layout. On this screen you can see neat and professional looking templates. Check out the link in the description if you want to download one of these templates, or if you want to check the cover letter example in text format. If you have any questions related to writing a cover letter for a high school student, don't hesitate and leave a comment in the comment section down below. See you next time, bye! So that was a nice little video that summed up some of the things that we were talking about in today's webinar. So now we're gonna focus on submitting your cover letter. Your cover letter is now written and tailored to the job you are applying for. How should you submit it to the employer? Let's find out. Electronic submission. When you're sending an email cover letter, it's important to follow the employer's specific instructions on how to submit your cover letter and resume. If there are no instructions, you want to combine the cover letter and resume as a PDF attachment. Send it as one document unless otherwise indicated or if you're required to upload it separately. Some online application systems ask that you upload them individually. You want to make sure the subject line in your message clearly states the position for which you are applying. The subject line should include the name of the position and the job or competition number so the employer knows what job your cover letter and resume are for. 
Some companies may be hiring for multiple positions at the same time, so clearly stating which one your document is for makes it easier for them to organize. And you want to keep the text in the body of the email to a minimum. It should be very brief. Saying something like, good morning or afternoon, please see the attached cover letter and resume for the sales associate position you have advertised on the job bank. You can contact me via phone or email if you have any questions. I look forward to hearing from you sincerely and then your name. So nothing that is too long or too detailed because that will all be information they can gather by reading your cover letter and your resume. So as previously mentioned, I work for an organization called Nova Scotia Works. There are offices all over the province who help people find and maintain employment. If you or someone you know is interested in receiving assistance from one of our Nova Scotia Works staff, follow the link to find a center closest to you. It should also be noted that youth are able to be serviced if they are within three months of graduating from high school. And if your school is fortunate enough to have a Nova Scotia Works school liaison, we would highly encourage you to reach out to them for any of your job search or career exploration needs. So this brings us to the end of the webinar on cover letter writing. We encourage you to keep an eye out for posters on our upcoming webinars as we would love to have you. You can find these on the Island Employment Facebook page or if you follow my social media accounts seen on this slide. If you do have any questions about today's webinar, feel free to reach out to me at the email on your screen, mfurlong at islandemployment.ca. I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar, and I hope to see you at some of our later sessions. Have a great rest of your day.